Okay, let's say you're playing Battlefield. You get a few kills and a tank, and then someone blows you up. In 15 seconds, you're back in full ammo, full health. The death only matters as much as one ticket in a game that started your team with a thousand tickets. A large majority of players have been drawn to the genre of Battle Royales in the past few years, and that's because of a few key elements to gameplay that make the games inherently more immersive, more stressful, more painful even, but most importantly, more rewarding. Tarkov isn't what I'd consider your average battle royale. It's quite a newer style of game in the genre. It's pretty hard to define in those two words. What I can tell you, what I can show to you, is that AAA game studios are and have been trying to copy the formula of games like Tarkov and Hunt Showdown in an attempt to create a similarly deep, immersive experience that they can't reach with their own game modes, but they usually fall short due to limitations in creativity, lack of understanding of why players play these extraction-based BRs, and and fear to create something risky in the game dev industry that is both challenging and punishing for the player, therefore deemed as not appealing for those casual audiences. Players, players in that truck, players in that truck. <laughs> In games like Escape from Tarkov, you level up the game by playing it, killing AI and other players, looting items in raid, and extracting alive. But the primary way to gain XP in Tarkov is tasks. I personally think it's a bit overpowered just how much these tasks weigh in in terms of importance to your daily experience in the game, limiting you to odd play styles to rank up your PMC faster than anybody else. Okay, all right, chill, hold on. But they also add an important level of stress onto every single player. More risk, more intensity, Tarkov. Let's say you accept a fetch quest. You enter a map, travel far and wide to find that item and extract. Not too difficult sounding, right? Well, well, there's other idiots on the map who are also doing quests, and if you run into them after you picked up your quest item, there it goes, kaput. So does your gear and gun, by the way. The fear of dying in this game is arguably the highest of any game I've ever played. You can kit up to mega beef mode, enter a raid, travel for 40 minutes completing tasks, only to get another player to ambush you and hit you with a shot between the eyes. It's intense. You could die right now to a camping sniper and lose 40 minutes of progress and potentially hours of looting a certain item. There's games that do this similarly. DayZ could be days worth of grinding loot for an in-game loadout, but when you die, it's not like you're losing your long-term progression on a trader or losing unique ultra-rare loot for upgrading your home base in the long run. You can start another character and be back at the in-game gear or find that same piece of loot, usually by the end of the day. Tarkov's in-game in comparison takes months for the regular player to reach. As I grinded to level 25 in this new wipe, I questioned why I was doing it. Why play a game that is so risky, so challenging, so grindy, even to the extent of being annoying? The game makes you do hilariously specific tasks, even in the first 50 hours into the gameplay. Uh, hey, newbie to Tarkov, can you shoot a dude in the right leg in particular, but make sure it's past 50 meters? I'll give you XP for it. Oh, and make sure it's with a Mosin Go find this item on one map, avoid all players and survive that raid, then go into this other highly dangerous map and place the item there. If you die in either of those raids, restart your 90 minute to 120 minute progress and try again. Better luck next time, stalker. Eat shit, bitch. I keep coming back to this game because whenever I suddenly get the drop on a player, take the shot and it lands, I know I might have ruined that dude's 40 minutes. He was probably on some quest, probably had vital loot he needed for his hideout or an upgrade or a trade, and I've utilized some map knowledge, a solid weapon of choice, and maybe some luck of the recoil system, and taken that progress for my own gain. But that's what makes it fun. Getting a kill in Battlefield or COD can be satisfying, sure. But when I died in a tank yesterday on Battlefield 1, and when I respond in such a quick manner with no repercussions, when I killed a player once and then killed the same player again in the same minute, I felt a certain feeling. The enemy player who killed me only set my team back one one thousandth for the 30 minute match. When I killed the other player, I set their team one one thousandth back for the 30 minute match as well. It's like nothing. You just defeated another human being in a combat scenario and he gets to come back in 10 seconds with only a scratch of punishment to his overall team score, and he can probably spawn back in the same area and come and target you again. It is satisfying a bit from a team play perspective to know that you defended a point from capture and killed players while doing it, taking away points from the enemy team, but it's just simply not as satisfying in comparison. You don't really kill the enemy player. You just removed him temporarily from your location and placed him back in wherever his team has a control point. 
Squad does a better job at this, both in lengthening respawn times to be more punishing, but also limiting your spawn points to both fobs and rally points. Killing a player usually sets them back about mm, five minutes from potentially seeing you again, which is better, but I'm still not truly killing that player as before. I'm just removing him from my location, forcing him to spawn elsewhere in, in squad 50 seconds. In the Battle Royale Apex Legends, if you down and kill a player but fail to wipe their team, their team can travel to a certain respawn node to return their friend back into the round, but their friend is now empty of loot and will have to restart their collection of gear, likely leaving them underpowered by the round's end. It does heavily punish a team if you kill a player, but it's until you wipe the entire squad that you're again not killing the player. In Tarkov, you kill people. I got him. Oh my gosh, I got him. Holy shit, good shot. You won't see him again. He's gone. He can't get revived. He can't respawn. He cannot re reconnect to the match. All of his weapons, loot, and gear are yours now. So if he had better stuff than you, eat up. It's the sort of satisfaction that got my crew and many others stuck on PUBG for those two years when it first launched. You are ending that person's ability to do anything against you. You are actually, for the first time of the FPS genre, killing a person permanently. You are likely never going to match with him ever again if you tried. His body lies on the ground, a hushed casket of what it used to be. Guns, gear, and a prepared mind. Most battle royales entail you running around, finding random loot, hoping that you can find a shotgun before the other nearby enemy player can. Whoever gets loot lucky gets a one-up on any firefight with better armor, a stronger weapon, and more medications and ammo. In Tarkov, it's up to you to decide how much you want to bring in your better armor, weapons, meds, and ammo. Because no matter how kitted up your AK is to reduce recoil, you can still take a shot to the neck at any moment anywhere on the map. It's a little game of chess, especially when working with a good team, of how your team composition is going to function. Same kit, let's go. <laughs> Does the point man have a solid assault rifle for mag dumping surprise enemies? Does your team have the optics for reaching out to players beyond 200 meters? Are you bringing supplemental food, water, or medication for when something goes wrong? Even more challenging of a question, on maps with mixtures of terrain types and urban environments, when you're solo, what do you bring? Do you bring a sniper in hopes that you can catch a player at a range that he can't fight back from? Or will you get ambushed at close range and be forced to utilize that sniper at a 10 foot distance? Your choices could and will mean the difference of extracting or playing the room temperature challenge in the middle of the forest. These are all hourly questions every player asks themselves in the game of prediction before the Tarkov deathmatch even begins. If you're new to the game, it's most definitely a challenge. You'll be undergeared with worse weaponry, ammo types, medications, armor, everything. You will also naturally, like any game, have a lack of map knowledge, ammo knowledge, loot locations, anything gives you the upper hand, you're at a disadvantage. But if you have the persistence to keep coming in, keep trying, you will find lucky breaks. You will eventually win the dice roll either by strategy or pure luck, but it's an addicting gamble nonetheless. Oh, I just nailed one! I just nailed one right in the face! The average mood of a Tarkov player can go much farther into the negatives than other games. Dying two hours into progressing a certain task, or dying after finding a specific item you spent days searching for, is not fun. Anger inducing for some, rage inducing for others. After dying enough to something like that, you'll never rage at a match of COD ever again. It's not even close. What this also does though is make those moments where you finally catch a break, complete a quest, extract with an item, or level up to better equipment much more satisfying and rewarding than most games can ever hope to achieve. See, Battlefield 2042 introduced Hazard Zone, an extraction-based BR mode where you can reach in-game items after maybe a total of two successful rounds. 2042 designed this to be a competitor to Escape from Tarkov, and its extraction-based VR style is an obvious copy of the basic formula. Spawn at a random point, players spread throughout the map, find a certain item, extract with a certain item without dying, and boom, congrats, you just played an extraction-based VR. Without the in-depth gear and weaponry system, without a unique setting and style, placed in maps designed for other game modes, without any long-term progression loop or end game that takes any longer than an hour to reach. Congrats. You just created an extraction-based BR title that has little to no intensity, very little risk, and very little reward. Effectively, you're just playing a slower version of Battlefield, where you might be able to pull off a slightly more, maybe immersive firefight than the usual meat grinder conquest mode would give you, but the game mode is stripped of any characteristics required to make an extraction-based shooter fun. 
You have to be scared of death for this game to keep you coming back. Gun cracks off, a bullet flying at 1800 FPS whizzes a hole through your backpack, adrenaline spikes, the hair on your back of your neck raises, your hand slams into the spacebar out of pure instinctive reaction. Knowing you have a nice rifle setup that you may not be able to afford again, knowing that you have a quest item that has taken you three raids to finally find. You relocate elsewhere and find the people who originally attempted to take your life. They're heading to extract. Let them pass, keeping your gear and mission progression safe, or take out as many as you can, teaching them that they should have gone for the head. So many immersive choices. There's not many games out there where you outright decide to not shoot someone because of a certain parameter, which is why I like playing Tarkov, Hunt Showdown, DayZ. There's actual depth and actual consequences, which make winning a fight so much more exciting. For as bad as a mood you can get on a bad day of Tarkov, you can equally have a much more amazing day on the game as well, and the most exciting factor is usually pure luck. For example, my buddy AV's computer, like in our last episode of Tarkov Gameplay, kept crashing while we were playing games due to a faulty motherboard. Don't worry though, he's already got himself a PC faster than mine on the way. AV's character is now stuck behind me, and it's my duty as he's actually in a defendable location this time, uh, not there, you. to protect him. I suddenly hear a player walking up nearby about to cross AV and I's path, and decide for some reason to not unleash lead upon the man as he walks through the hole in the wall. Thanks to Tarkov's VoIP, I was able to warn him of my presence and reason for sitting at the location when he replies back, I want you to listen to the tone of this guy's voice. And from zero to 10, guess how intense of a situation it was for him to simply bump into anyone on the other side of that wall. Uh, man, oh, they're really three. going at it. Yo, let's go. Gosh, fuck you. No. Okay, at least you're still and you're in relative cover. I hate this game. I hate this game. Oh. There's a person coming up. Don't come through the gate. I'll kill you. I'm sorry. I don't want to do anything please, to you, man. Please do not. <laughs> I just need to survive this raid. Okay, dude. okay. Uh, uh, can you... Uh, so my buddy's crashed behind me. That's why I'm not wanting you to can come I to avoid? this gate. Can you go around that so way? Or, or uh, RUAF is not open. It's not. Oh my god, dude, that's awful. You're oh. talking. Yeah. Oh my god. My friend's back. Terrifying. You're good. You're good. Uh, Where are you? you? We won't kill you. Uh, if you want to come through here now, cause my buddy's awake. We'll we'll leave. We'll leave. We'll leave. You can come through. Just Thank give us. So much. Give right, us like I'm, I'm twenty seconds. Yeah, yeah. Give us like twenty seconds, and then you'll you can walk through. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm walking back to where I was. Tell me whenever I'm good. To move. You're good. You're good. Move <laughs> now. Move now. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> I, I did, he was gonna come through the gate, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be nice, to this guy. So I said, don't come through the gate, or I will kill you. And he's like, oh please. <laughs> he was nearly begging, and we'll never know why. He probably had a quest item, had been through a few raids trying to get it, and within the last 30 seconds to victory, ran into another player at the wall, blocking his path with the easy potential to take another hour of progress away from him. Neither player ever saw each other, but both players accepted the reward for risking their lives in a fight was probably not worth it and went their separate ways. You seriously don't find these dynamic unscripted events much farther into general battle royales and you definitely never lower your weapons against the enemy in your standard shooter game. Just doing the quest. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I've got a pistol and no other loot. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we just go there? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I, bro, stuff. I will not win a fight if I try to fight you guys. If you want to shoot me, you can, but I'm just going to do the quest. I've literally no, got to do your quest, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Nah, man. Thank you. Appreciate it.
totally unique encounters with dynamic, environmental, and progression-based pressures. VoIP adds a giant element to the game that I've mentioned many times before. It can break up firefights instantly, and it comes down to reading the tone of a player to know if they can be trusted or not, which requires your special charisma level to be around 9 to convince someone to open themselves up for the shot, or to befriend you to do some in-game trading. VoIP can be used also to inspire the other player to talk back, possibly revealing more people on his team than you thought might have existed. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, just put down your weapons and give up! Come on! You're not gonna peek Come on, just, around. just put the gun down. There's four of you. I don't know how to kill that I fucking person. I hear you healing back there. Dude. It's not gonna work out for you, okay? These guys are pretty pro at the I'm game. Scared. No, no, oh, just shit, put the gun down, little silly friend. All you have to do is put it down. Mama told me not to. All dead, all dead, all dead, all dead. We good? I died. One more, one more, one more. Up high, I'm low. One more up high. I think I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Oh my God, you're so tall and handsome. And giving you information if you place certain questions along your small talk. Hey, do you need help on a task? Will usually be answered with whatever task they're on. Where'd you spawn? I heard a firefight at the power station. Was that you? Is a common style of question I use to find information on a player and where their extracts will be. These are harmless questions you usually get honest answers to, which helps me find out more about the saturation of players on the map, find out how to avoid or find this player again and get a better picture of the overall raid. Teamwork is also key in Escape from Tarkov. You can play this game solo, sure. You can progress all the way to end game without ever making a friend or speaking a single word. But the game also allows for up to four friends to join you every raid, which I think is amazing. The game says, hey, you want to bring some friends in? Sure but you can accidentally team kill them just as easily as the enemy, and you won't get any magic icon above their head to show friendly or foe. You're on your own. I enjoy team play in this game, probably more than any other game I've played. You can apply real life strategy in an environment that sorta of abides by the basic rules of combat. Players have, relatively to other shooters, realistic health, realistic stamina, realistic aim, unless you're talking about how much recoil a 5.56 AR has in this game. Seriously, can we cut a tangent just to talk about 5.56? I own four rifles in real life that shoot 5.56. One of the main things that I do off of YouTube is stalk hunting invasive feral hogs. If you have a problem with it, look up the invasive hog problem in Texas. You're, you actually help the natural environment by hunting. It, it's crazy, I know. Oh, wow, Texas. Uh, I shoot 5.56 constantly. High-powered hunting rounds like Hornady 62 grain or just plinking with 55 grain FMJ, anything from M855 and 193 varmint rounds and armor penetrators, I've pew pewed. I've never been professionally trained. I'm an idiot civilian who hunts a bit for local ranches. And I'm telling you, you have a basic muzzle break on a 16-inch AR. You have active ear per on, shooting through nods. The recoil is just a little, little, little tiny little vibration that sh throws your aim off only a smidgen. An extremely flat weapon when firing. If my skinny ass can shoot flat with an AR on semi-auto, my professionally trained Angus Beef PMC should too. It's dumb. 556 is entirely underpowered in this game merely for its terribly misplaced recoil amount. Lightly modded AKMs get less recoil than a standard M4. What? Back to the teamwork section. Pr pr breathe, Drewski, breathe. Teamwork in this game is challenging. Solo players always comment about how difficult the game is with the ability to queue up against five-man squads, but what most solo players that haven't queued with five people might not realize is for a five-man to work effectively at all, you need exquisite communication, formations, and teamwork for all five to have a chance at surviving a raid. Comms can easily get so filled with chatter that you can't hear vital game sounds like enemy footsteps. Poor identification can stop you from firing on a player out of fear that it could be a teammate, missing vital moments to get that headshot. There's multiple new factors in this game that don't happen in many others solely by playing with a group of friends, and I love it. In 2019 and 2020, my team of buddies was arguably, in my opinion, one of the best five mans on Interchange. We played nothing but Interchange. We had formations and invented callouts that have stayed with the entire community. Spots like Idea Secret and Ollie Secret are named that way because we didn't find those pathways until day two of playing the map, so we designated those spots as secret and secret stairs. The callouts are still there today on every callout map, which is, I don't know, just kind of neat. Fighting against varying levels of players is always a fun feature. You will never know when it's fully safe to loot a dead player unless you killed five people that you're sure were all on the same team. 
Looting bodies is always risky. It takes time to search through someone's gear. Unlike almost every BR out there where you can just spam things over to your inventory, you can spend minutes digging through a player's stuff to find out what's worth it and not here. Okay, I see movement. Yep, yep, yep. Got I'm him. Moving. A body might be down, but if players who were that body's teammate are still alive, they can gain exact knowledge through the Discord call of where that body or potential grub is located, where they were killed from, what gun killed them, even witness PMCs and passerby scavs can also listen to the fight and tell when or where a player died without even being within line of sight. Last gun to fire usually means it's the winner of the fight. If you can ID the gunshot sound, you can ID the gunshot model. Then you've immediately gained info about what weaknesses that rifle may have. Some of these variables are obviously possible in other titles, sure, but none of them stack up like Tarkov. Tarkov's direction of no HUD, realistic looting, and dynamic party count gameplay, you really never know what you're going to run into in most Battle Royale games, and that is an exponentially larger unknown when playing Tarkov, which adds a level of intensity to every single step you take. <laughs> Tarkov does have its fair share of issues, and when titling a video as positive sounding as this one, I'm sure veteran Tarkov players will have their fair share of complaints when it comes to game balance, combat mechanics, inertia, metas, and such. And to an extent, they're probably right. But all I can say is that Tarkov is one of the most unique games on the market I've seen since Arma 2's Day Z mod. It is impressively independent of game trends and a refreshing take on a very challenging to play genre, and it is still one of the few remaining shooter games that can jump scare me to this day. This has been Jeruski. I'm live on Twitch playing Tarkov right now. Come check it out. Thanks.